Hello, South Africa. San Monani M. Zanzi. I'm back again with another phenomenal woman of change, Retabile Musese. Retabile, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Retabile, tell me a little bit about yourself. Retabile Mapukedi Musese, named after Nkhonwaka Mapukedi. I am my mother's daughter, Kirahadi Wamoto, and I also happen to manage the legal program here at LVA or Lawyers Against Abuse. Lawyers Against Abuse, that's an interesting concept. Tell me a little bit about your organization. So Lawyers Against Abuse or LVA is a multidisciplinary team of professionals providing integrated and holistic support to victims of gender-based violence, right? So we have a legal department with our legal practitioners. We have psychosocial support with social workers and a drama therapists. And we also have community development officers who work with the outreach initiatives. Was this a personal journey for you that landed you here? Or are you you're a lawyer by profession, but you, you focused more on abuse? Was that by choice or is this a personal journey for you? And if it is, maybe just elaborate. What really drew me to LVA is the integrated approach, right? Because justice for a survivor is not necessarily a conviction. Justice could be emotional healing. It comes in different forms. And I think LVA allows for that platform for Motuyena of what it means, you know, to receive justice. So it's about the integrated approach and it's making sure that the law and paper and the lived realities coincide. So I think that's what drew me to LVA. In your view, in simple terms, what is gender-based violence? For me, I've always understood gender-based violence to be an abuse of power in simple terms, an abuse of, of, of toxic masculine power. I think you put it perfectly. It is that abuse of power, right? And it is any type of violence that you are more vulnerable to because of your gender. Oftentimes we think violence is in the beating, right? Is in the rape, right? But there's violence in the in the picking you up at work to control your movement, in the belittling, in the... So there's a broad spectrum of what it is. One of the things that, that have always been so frustrating for me is that gender-based violence seems to be a, a simple yet complex matter. But often in our society, women don't even know or understand that your husband can rape you, that your boyfriend can rape you. And it's always been a mind boggle for me as to what it is about GBV that we are not getting right in terms of getting justice. We realize well in South Africa we have great legislation, right? But it's on paper. It's, it, there's a gap between what's on paper and women's lived realities, right? And so LVA tries to bridge this gap. And so we provide holistic legal and psychosocial support services to victims of gender-based violence. And so that's responding to the individual after something has happened, right? But we also understand what this individual needs to enter into a legal system that works. So to ensure that there's meaningful access to the criminal justice system, we also do some systematic work in trying to strengthen the criminal justice system, right? Strengthen how the very laws that look on paper are implemented. How important is closure for victims? Is it a conviction? So Lynn and I, this was part of my journey for LVA. As a legal practitioner, you think uh, victory is in the conviction, it's in the sentencing, it's in getting the final protection order. But I've come to learn all its different things, right? Lawyers Against Abuse, as mentioned previously, we have the drama therapist, the social worker, and the legal team, right? And oftentimes, people will come and just want legal assistance. Years later, come back and seek the emotional support. Where if people say, I was raped as a child, I give up like Casey, I merely need this type of support. I think closure means different things to different people. It's a personal experience, similar to trauma, and I want to amplify this, or there is no one way to respond to trauma. Right? Anything you feel, anything you do, that's the correct thing. Sometimes you might forget details, other times you become hypervigilant, there's a broad spectrum. It is your story and nobody else can tell you what it's meant to look like. But are we doing enough, you know, to educate family members? Because there's the victim and then there are those who are affected by what's happened to their loved one. Are we doing enough to support families? Are we doing enough to educate families? Linda, what I appreciate about LVA, we are constantly reflecting on how we do the work. Um, and so last year in particular, there were a lot of cases that minor rapes, right? 
and you'll find that the mother herself has experienced a rape but hasn't dealt with her own trauma. And so she's dealing with her daughters, she's dealing with herself and all these emotions. And so we have created a program, the IK give us support, right? And then in addition to the individual counseling, we have psychoeducational workshops. What Shali says about society, why it is that your child is responding this way and how better to support one another. So I think how more to agula, even with myself, if something's wrong with me, it affects the entire family system. So I think it's important that the entire system be supported. Are you seeing progress? Are you seeing justice when it comes to gender-based violence? You, it's a layered question. Because we weren't needed for the last couple of weeks, I have been tired, like emotionally depleted. Because there's a story on TV, right? And when I leave focus during 16 days, during Women's Month, or if there's a high profile case. But the reality, Koran puts an idea like every single day, you know, over and over again. To date, we have assisted, I think, more than 1,100 victims of gender based violence, right? 120 of those are minors. So, are we making progress? Again, on paper, it would appear so. It takes up to two years for a case to be finalized, right? And in those two years, right? you are dealing with a courtroom environment that is hostile, right? You're constantly being triggered and reliving the experience, right? And we are meant to have sexual offenses courts with officers who understand trauma, but that's not, again, lived reality. So are we, are we seeing progress? I, the national strategic plan looks great. The action points look great, implemented, right? It's making sure that victims have access to the care and support services that they need. It's rolling out the sexual offenses course so that you have people trained working on trauma so that they understand why it is people respond the way they do, right? It's having prosecutors with a manageable workload so that they can focus on the cases. It's having a core preparation officer, Atla Shalusi Samat, what to expect when you're at court, right? It's having a social worker that will provide counseling, not just in the moment, but long after when somebody is triggered. It's making sure all of that is in place. It's ensuring we're happy about GBV during 16 days, Kappa, August, Stefella. It's a 365 and we're consistent. It's making sure the things that are on paper are actually being done. Yeah, and I think like the barometer, how do we measure that we're actually progressing? Like how are we engaging civil society on what we're doing and what, and, and what strides we've made? You know, I think at grassroots levels, we're really, really are just not getting it right. Um, and, and, and obviously, I just think there's a lot more that needs to be done. Right, Habile, I'm, I'm sure you're grateful that DSTV has given you this opportunity to be able to talk about the work, the phenomenal work um, that, that you are doing. But on a personal level, I want you to talk to South Africans, if you look into camera and tell South Africans how they can help your organization in the work that you do? Because we are working with trauma, it's very difficult for people to become involved in the work itself. That's why you have specialists such as social workers and lawyers doing the actual work. How you can support our services is through making donations. This will enable us to expand, open other centers in South Africa, and to ensure that more victims have access to a meaningful, efficient, and effective justice system. How do people make those donations? Where do they go? Your websites? You can, you can look up our website, www.lva.org.za. Rita Vile, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for not just talking the talk, but being the change that you want to see in the world. Uh, my prayer is that you continue in the beautiful and phenomenal work that you're doing, and that in the future, we really get to see a better and progressive and, and positive uh, society in South Africa. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. Thank you. Mm.